What's up guys, Barahams here with episode 3 of my Minnesota United career mode. Before we get into the game against New York Red Bulls, let's talk about the second game of the season, the home opener against Real Salt Lake. Well, at least I got the scoreline right in my prediction. Just got to switch the teams. But yeah, all things aside, that was another subpar performance by Minnesota United. With 23 shots and only two on target, you know it's going to be a rough night. Safe to say, the team missed Baki Debasi and a left midfielder, as Raitala and Finlay could not cut it respectively. I would say, watching this team is like waiting for a PS5. The upgrade is there, with players like Abila, Unu, and possibly Fragapane coming the loon's way. But we're just stuck right now, waiting on Walmart and PS Direct queues while bots steal them from under your nose. Yes, I will get a PS5 sometime, but goddamn, this is annoying. For this week's top and bottom three of the week, I will start out with the lowlights, and number three was Juan Agudelo. This was his chance to stake a claim for future minutes, but he bottled it by being a ghost at best. Every counterattack chance was halted by his indecisiveness, and his shot attempts were by far the worst out of everybody. And also, it doesn't help your future when Robin Wood replaces you and he buries one home afterwards. Second worst, I'd say, it was Nuka Raitala. If RSL were a better team, it would have been a 4-1 game. The Finnish international was incredibly slow, and the Loons were lucky to have Boxel pick up his mess. And I would have to say, his left side partner, Chase Gasper, was the worst player of the week, and he would admit it himself. His two biggest mistakes led to the two goals, and he seemed clearly frustrated by going forward more and trying to put on skill moves he did without effort in past seasons. If this continues, the former Maryland Terrapin could be having himself a slump here. For the top three, I will start with the youngster from Wake Forest in Justin McMaster. With only 30 minutes, he was able to bring a spark that was lacking on the left side and with his awareness, got himself his first professional assist by setting up Robin Wood's goal. I'm so ecstatic for the kid and I hope to see him possibly start against Austin FC. For number two, I'll give it to Lud for his goal. His shots honestly were the most dangerous out of everybody's and I'm so happy compared to his performances from 2019, he's doing a stellar job at that right side and playing striker as well. And my first star for me would be Michael Boxel. Again, this game would have been another four goal drubbing without Boxel's speed to chase down attacking forwards. He's done a really good job stepping up in Ikopar and Baki Debasi's absence. After two games, I am a little concerned. There are still 32 left and new acquisitions will be arriving but the core needs to hunker down and churn out a victory against expansion side Austin next week, or else this might be a very long season. Overall, I would rate this performance yet again another C minus D plus. There were a lot more positives, I would say, but still the negatives were consistent from last week. Before ending this segment, I will comment on David Ochoa's antics from the 60th minute on. There's a somewhat professional way to time waste, and what Ochoa displayed during and after the game was pathetic. If Dane St. Clair or Tyler Miller did the same thing, I would be embarrassed. 30 minutes of just flailing and flopping Neymar-esque after getting barely touched left and right, and then just kicking the ball into the opponent's stance. That's not good at all. That is truly embarrassing, as I said previously. For the third episode, we will be playing only one game, and it will be against New York Red Bulls as before. It's one episode a week. We'll play one game a week during the entirety of the MLS season. The only reason why I played two was because of the U.S. Open Cup. It's not really a cup that will probably happen this year because of COVID. And it was against RSL. And I was like, you know what? We're playing RSL this week. It's good for two. But there might be some weeks where I know one's coming up where uh, Vancouver and Dallas come play at Allianz Field on the same week. I'll play both of those games since it's one episode per week. But for this week, we'll just play the game against New York Red Bulls. Once again, I am manning a lineup that will probably be the same for the Austin FC game. Gasper, Raitala, Boxel, and Matt Nair, the back four. I think that's going to stay the way it is because there really isn't any help for center back or left back, though Baki Debasi might be back for the weekend. Who knows? Then we have Will Trapp and Grey Goosh in the middle. Nothing changes there. We do have Dotson back on the left wing. See how he can do there this time. Then we have Reynoso, Finlay, and then Lud back at striker. I hope not. I hope Abila gets to start, but I think it might be Lud once again. An early no, chance no. here is Reynoso. We're going to get Dotson out on the wing. Actually slides that through to Trapp. Will Trapp. Tries to get in the way, but New York has that covered. 
Chance on the counter here. Hoskins does have a runner outside in Royer. Royer closing in. Do have Miller there. Miller tries his best. A near post shot. Royer gets New York on the board. Malud did have a bit of a run, but he does see Reynoso running. Flips that through Reynoso. Trying to get him through. Does get through. Still sticks with it, and he scores. Emmanuel Reynoso getting his first goal on the season. A great one-two play with Robin Ludd. That's what I want to see in real life this coming weekend against Austin FC. But at least we get to see it now on FIFA. So that was just a poor clear. And just falls right to the Argentine. Almost intercepted by Gasper, who plays a little more forward. And that will do it for the opening 45. We do go down first, but then our highest paid designated player, Emmanuel Reynoso, able to take away the ball from the defender, give us the equalizing goal. It's now Barlow looking to find that extra half yard. We'll find Vallo to try to open up things. There's a good block, though it is going to stay with them. As there's a shot, good save, though offsides. This will be a perfect time for a substitution. I think what we'll do is we will bring on Ramon Abila, and I think we will take off Hassani Dotson. We'll uh, switch Lud and Finlay, and we'll see how long Finlay can play on that left side. Poor pass out by Boxel, still with the Red Bulls. So he's going to get beat. Raital, our last chance, and that's going to go in. Just 15 minutes to go. We give up which might be the game-winning goal. Poor passing out the back by Michael Boxel. Now we got to really fix things here. We've made a switch to the formation. We're going to a 4-1-4-1, and we'll have two cams right next to Abila. Hanzo just desperately trying to get the ball back. There's another chance. There's another shot, and there is another goal, the third for New York Red Bulls. It looks like this game will be out of reach. Hanzo gets beat by Hoskins. Fabio back to Hoskins. Going to find Edwards. A wide to Velo. Looking for that half a yard. He's going to have to find Vallo again. Vallo. Chance to take a shot here. Will take it. Gets it past Miller. That will probably be the final kick of the game. Another goal for the New Jersey, the Harrison, New Jersey Red Bulls, New York Red Bulls, whatever you want to call them. They make the trip all the way from out east, and they just beast all over us. With that somewhat real-life accurate result, we now sit in sixth place with six points on three games. Two points per game is still pretty good. We have a goal differential of zero because we did give up four goals in that game. Hoping things can turn around. Maybe once you know, Abila and Unu get to start playing, we'll actually start putting them in. And we might actually go on a run of sorts. So before I go, I will make a prediction for the upcoming game. Minnesota United against Austin FC. And this is a toughie. I think I'm going to go with the Loons winning on this one. I know the past two games have been pretty dreadful, but... I would have to say this is a game that they bounce back. They'll get some players back in the lineup. They'll hopefully have Abila. They'll hopefully have Debasi. And if they have those two, I think for certain we will have a 2-1 victory. And Wonderwall will be playing once again. So yes, this will be the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed watching as much as you did playing it. Be sure to like, subscribe, and I will see you for episode 4. This has been Bearhams, and as always, toodaloo.